Source code X, this is your lucky day. You caught me on a good mood, and I'm going to give you your very own specialized individual tutorial on how to animate uh, in Bryce. But um, there's going to be a few restrictions here because animation is a huge topic. Bryce itself is a huge topic. So we're just going to stick with the basics. Um, so what you're seeing at the moment is your default scene from Bryce. There's a camera in the distance here, and you're looking at it from the director's point of view. You can tell which camera you're using, either the director or the camera, through this icon here. And you can click on it and select the camera view. The director doesn't have an icon or anything else to represent what it is. It's just an invisible view. So you can toggle between these two views to see what's going on in your scene. Ultimately, you want to render your scene through the camera. But you can render your scene through the director. But render your scene through the camera. All right, so there's a couple of things to know about animation. First off, um, down the bottom here, uh, you have your animation timeline. And you can, you can start your animation by either double clicking on the scrub tool here or setting your animation preferences here. They both get you to the same box where you enter in uh, the duration of your animation and how many frames per second. Just as a little tip, uh, YouTube really likes 30 frames per second, and your ratio, that is the dimensions of your box, should either be 1280 pixels by 720 pixels down. So that's 1280 across, 720 pixels down or 1920 pixels across and 1080 pixels down uh, sorry 10 1080 pixels down or 1080 all right Doc, that's document size that's your duration and time i'm just going to get rid of this because i'm going to set animation yet another way i'm going to set an animation of i don't know well we'll see how we go because we can set this dynamically as we go along and my animation is I'm going to create a oops wrong one create yep create a terrain stick it in the water because everyone loves loves little islands and water I might just uh, bring it up a little bit here these are your edit tools zip okay so we are really are going right from the beginning here of building your scene I'm just going to have it hovering just under the water uh, I might reposition the sun so that it's lit a little bit better there we go low angle in the sun so I can get some nice sunset colors happening in the clouds. Now, where is it? Come on, light, light my little island. Cool, that'll do. And I might change the island uh, material as well. The material are the colors in the island. Clicking the little M on the little drop down, you can select, uh, oops, you can select um, which material you want to apply it to. I'm going to have a terrain type. And I might make it a, oh, let's try planes. No, not interesting. Rocky? Ooh. Now we're talking. Yeah, let's have one of these nice, yeah, okay, that's cool, yep. Uh, blah, 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 lots of parameters, yada, yada. Cool, yeah, fine, I might even brighten up the sun a little bit here. Let's double click the sun, and uh, mm, where's my sun power? Sun, 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 sun. Uh, oh, sun intensity, here we go. Yes. Oof. Oh, yeah, that'll look lovely. Very nicely well lit sun. Just trying to get it in half in shadow here so we can get some more contrast. Okay, now I'm just looking at this thumbnail view just to get an idea of uh, what's going on uh, lighting wise. I don't want to keep re rendering and rendering over and over again, it slows things down. So we have our basic scene. What we want to do is move the camera around this island so that we have a nice, you know, I guess general appreciation of the scene. Now, a lot of what animation is is to do with your camera controls or your positioning controls and your animation tools. Now if you uh, go down here, by default I think Bryce sets up, th these are your selection tools, so you can select all of the things that are cylinders, uh, or the, all the things that are toruses. You can select these things, of course we don't have any of these things in the scene, but we can select all the terrains. Or if you hold down on these buttons, you can select which terrain, okay? But we don't want these tools, we want the animation tools. In particular we want to check one thing, are we working in auto key mode or not in auto key mode? Auto key mode means anything you move, any change you make to the scene will be recorded as a keyframe. All right. Uh, without auto key, which is the mode I'm going to be operating this in, you have to physically set or click these buttons here to set a point for an object in the position space. Hope that's clear. 
won't cover this other stuff. But anyway, <clears throat> what I want to do is look, because I'm in director view and I've uh, kind of arranged the scene uh, on the point of view of the director, I want to bring the camera, <coughs> excuse me, to the director. And there's a very easy command to do this. It's over here camera to director. And here, when I let go, the camera will disappear because it's now taking the viewpoint of the director. If you don't believe me, I'm still in director mode here, as we can see here. I'm going to click on the camera. Same view. Same view. I'm in director. I'm going to move away from the camera mode. You can sort of see these little lines. I'm backing off the camera at the moment. And I'll just rotate around it so you can see the camera is, or rather was, no, it is where my director is now. Uh, was, rather. Okay, so I'm just going to take an aerial view now of my scene. Come on, you. Just drag a few arrows here and just back off a little bit. Cool. So to essentially get an idea of flight, what we want to do is move the camera around the scene. Okay. Now, this we're talking about the camera here, but really this applies to any object you can put in Bryce. First thing we're going to do is set a keyframe for that camera's position. And we're going to do that simply by just clicking this plus button here. You select the object, click plus. Done. Little gold key lights up saying that there is a keyframe for this object at this time. Now I'm going to move the timeline along. Scrub tool says, oh, let's go five seconds. There we go. Now I'm just going to move the camera more around over there somewhere. And now I can do that by dragging it, by physically clicking on it and dragging it around. But I want to keep it on the same height, same altitude, if you like. So I'm going to use the Edit Tools and then position the camera in the X and Z directions just so we get a nice kind of position there. Right. So that's uh, a new position for the camera. But there's nothing telling Bryce that there is a keyframe for it. So we go down and set another keyframe. Watch what happens. Hey, there's a line here now. So that line just tells you when that object is selected. I'm just going to unselect it. No line. Select it again. That line tells you that there is a path or trajectory that this camera is going to go. Another thing you notice is that now this line down the bottom is filled in with a solid dark green. That indicates that there is action happening in your time. Let's play back this animation just in wireframe. We're just using these playback buttons here. I'm sure you're familiar with them, being a muso. We we'll press play. Okay, nothing too spectacular there. You are animating. That's it. Now, obviously, there are, there comes a time when you want to sort of look at this thing, because at the moment, if we were to go into a camera view at the moment, clicking here, we can see that the island's kind of slid out of view, and you can also see a feedback happening there. So if we were to go back to the beginning and press play again, this is our animation as the camera would see it. Naturally, of course, it'll be a land on an endless plain of water, but the island would just kind of drift out of view. So what we're going to do is add a tracking maneuver to the camera. And the easiest way to do that is to go back into director mode, because the director, remind, you know, I've set the scene up so the director has a kind of God's eye view of everything that you can see in your scene. It just makes it easier to plan out. I'm going to set the camera. I'm going to use this little tool here called Link to Pen. No, sorry, this one here. Yes, Track Object. Anything that you hover over tends to have a, uh, a little information blip happening down in the bottom left hand corner. So I want to go to Track Object. And I'm going to click on this object here and drag till my land object is highlighted in green. Now, watch what happens to the camera. Just look at the camera. Did you see that little reposition there? Now the camera is pointing directly at the landmass. We can check it. 
And now watch, watch what happens when we play this animation. Camera's still moving in a straight line, but it's always now pointing towards the landmass. I don't know if we've got time for this, but I'm just going to render out a uh, what's called a thumbnail view, and this just clicking this little button here, and this is how you can check uh, at a very small scale uh, the pace of your animation. And what will happen is it renders out all these frames that you've uh, that you've built along this animation line, and you can see there's quite a few of them. Uh, I might just pause and uh, speed things up a little here. And then we thank the god for editing prowess, and we're just about to finish, and it will automatically pay, play back the entire scene in your nano preview up top here. Here it is. Thumbnail view is just to give you an idea of flow, what's what's happening in the scene. Of course, you would render it, render it out full frame when you're ready. So that's basically the uh, the sticks of animation. There is a ton of different bits and pieces of information that, that can be gleaned from both my videos and if you subscribe to the Bryce Talk forum, and that's on Daz3D's site. So if you go to www.daz3d.com and take a look at the Bryce Talk forum, you can pose a question there and there'll be lots of people there that can help you out.